Week seven, running a property analysis against its comps. Took a little bit longer than I thought, but again, doing my due diligence to run it through the system, a very meticulous amount, uh, level of detail, you know, looking at the square footage, 0 0.5 mile radius, uh, does it fit the same bed, number of bedrooms? Was it made in the in the span of the exact same uh, the last 50 years? You know, was it in the same school zone? Uh, so, uh, 0 0.5 mile radius zone. It, a lot of factors that you got to look at. So running it through that system, and it took a little bit longer. It took about 40 minutes. It should be you know five to 10 minutes, but that's okay. Uh, it's the beginning, but it just shows you how much effort and how much work needs to be done to to get to that level was also using toggle which is a really nice app that takes uh it's actually a website you can go to it'll keep track of how long things are taking the goal is to trim that time down baby because it's all about speed all about speed let's get it all right analysis week it is so we're evaluating properties um we're just again get i'm getting used to Comparing a subject property with its comparables, so then you can really narrow it down and see which comparable is actually the best so that you can actually calculate your after repair value. So again, this is just to bring it back full circle. We have a property, we're looking to invest into it, or we are either looking to wholesale it. And so what we're doing is we're trying to calculate, you know, how much the uh, the ARV will be after all the repairs. So in other words, how much can we sell this property for um, with the investments included, so AKA the renovations, so that we can make a profit or so that our investors can make a profit. And so the, the cheapest you can buy it for, the greater your profit margins are. Uh, however, you obviously need to make an educated uh, estimate so that when you are pitching an offer it resembles or is in the range that the other similar properties in that area go for and again when you're doing appraisal there's justifications for it so that's how we get into details right as to you know is are the bedroom size the same square foot area garage what kind of heating you know, again, these are, we're making the assumptions that we've done our due diligence up front and that these properties that we've chosen here, the comparables, are actually meet the basic criteria, which are, you know, is it 20% or above or lower the square footage of our, our subject property? Is it in the same school district? Is it underneath the half mile radius? Uh, did it sell in the last 50 years? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, did it was it built in the last 50 years uh, between the subject property and the comparable? Because that does make a difference, right? One would be a newer property versus another would be very old if it was any older than 50 years or, or newer than that. Um, what else is another one? Uh, so we, we, we mentioned um, square footage. We mentioned uh, school district. We mentioned... Square uh, square footage we mentioned, uh, zero point five, uh, equal to or less radius, square mile radius. So those are more or less the baselines, and then we do dive a little deeper, because within those comparables you can see there's different prices: three sixty five, three fifty, three twenty. So the last one here, again, this is our subject property, just comparing it with, um. Uh, what is the name of this? So I'm just going to take you through the process of where I'm currently at in the process. Our last property is the 761 in Sedinas. Again, these are just test properties. Not actually looking to invest there yet. <clears throat> it's actually from one of the courses I'm taking. So 0 0.4 miles. Okay, excellent. So we'll put that in there. So we're just going through our document here. We'll put that in there. 0 0.4, we have the description. 0 0.4 miles away. Okay. Then when was it? So again, I have my other screen here that I'm, oh, what did I do, what did I do? That's not good. Take you guys back here. This is what I'm looking at here. 
I'm going to fill out the document if I can find it. Oh, the beauty of having all these windows. Uh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to drag this one out of the way and we're going to fill her up. So, we have, when was it last sold? Uh, or actually, when was it listed? It was listed on November 8th. We're going to type this in. I'm typing it in. And again, I'm sharing. I have another screen. So to facilitate the process, definitely an investment. Ever since I got a double screen, I can't go back. Once you get two screens, you can't go back. School district. So San Diego Unified. Perfect, we'll type that in, San Diego Unified, perfect. Uh, we have what neighborhood, Lomita, so it's very similar. Okay, okay we're doing this. Let me go drag this out of the way so you guys can see me filling this out. Then what are we saying here, street quality, traffic, how does it look? So it did say originally it was very private. So I would say average or on the quieter side. So AVG, I would even say quieter, uh, quietest, between the three. Surrounding properties quality, yeah, average. Right, again, these are comps, so they'll be more or less, more or less the same. Um, and again, I'm looking at the property Scroll up here. Bring you guys back in here. What else are we looking for? We're looking for how big the property is. So we see the dimensions on here. That's per room. The estimated square feet is 1236. So we'll add that in there 1236. And then the lot size. How big is the lot? Let's see here. Does it say? Uh, lot size, no. Oh, it's just taking one step out of time. Let's put it into 1236. I was looking to f do the lot size, but I don't have it. We'll come back to it. Square foot, footage, 1236. It's the most important. Let's see, lot judgments. Let's say average. I would just fine for now. I don't have any judgments view quality. It says it does have a private view. Uh, I'm going by what I wrote in here. So it's on the less traveled side of the street. It has one a ton, has tons of privacy. Uh, features include uh, again, that's not carpet. That's carpet. That's bedroom. Um, so definitely on the quiet rear really side view large walk-in clothes in the master bedroom okay interesting so let's see bedrooms we have three we'll come back to the top bathrooms two when was the house made it was made 1954 and now i'm starting to get more familiar with where to locate this information this is again anything that either if you have access to mls or if you have a property card given by a realtor you can more or less assess it that way uh, there's different ways you can get even on zillow you'll get this high level information these are more or less deep more detailed uh so it just gives you an idea of how we're getting all this data 1954 is here bedrooms there parking spaces too interesting the other one had four i don't know if i put that down last time i might have to add that on here property property data like parking because I believe one of the other homes at four so that's a good little perk but we're more or less focused on the house it's more or less the lot uh, garage 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 is there anything about the garage that stands out attached in driveway so it's very similar to that we'll just do a quick copy paste <clears throat> excuse me 
and see heat, equipment, wall, gravity. <coughs> Okay. I haven't really heard of that. Wall gravity. I'll have to look up what that means. Again, I'm more or less getting familiar with the terminology as well. All part of the experiment, guys. Pool, there is none. It would actually be tough for a pool to be a comparable. I mean, no, actually, I, I take that back. But sometimes it either adds a lot of value or actually uh, subtracts value from the home, uh, depending on how big the pool is, if it covers too much of the yard, etc. So, basement and finish below. Uh, ba boom, boom. Let's see you here. Do I see any basement? Again, guys, the reason why it's taking time is I'm getting familiar with these forms. Um, I think the beauty of it is more practice will allow me to just fly through this so that's a key takeaway to put on i'm also using this application called toggle that tracks your time so the goal as we move forward let me see if i can pull this up no obviously now that i'm looking for it i don't have it oh Oh boy, here it is. I'm getting myself into trouble here. Uh, I will show you guys in a bit. Oh, there it is. Toggle. Toggle is tracking my time. It should not take myself 39 minutes. I will work towards in improving that, but that just shows you that when you're a starter, at first it takes a whole lot longer. If, it, if every property evaluation took 30 minutes, we'd be in big trouble. But the goal is to run through these really quickly, see what the comp, you know, across the board is, uh, what the best comp is, and then based on that, make an offer. So, uh, basement, I don't see anything, so I'm just going to put NA. Sometimes that's easier, as long as you're comparing apples to apples. All right, so... There you go. So we have a comps value ARV at 320, 350. Lastly, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you why this is very interesting because this one at 320 is looking gorgeous. It's very, very nice. And based on what we would think we'd be able to do, we'd say, yeah, we could have a, with renovations included, we could have something uh, that looks like this, that looks this clean, that looks, and so based on that price, you would take that into consideration. You wouldn't take something that's listed for the 320K and that doesn't look like a remodeled um, home because the ARV is the after repair value. So you got to take that into account. All right, so that's the end of my little experiment log there. Note to self. And honestly, we want to get this time down.
So it's been 39 minutes I've been working on this. 